right, hello everybody. Welcome to the lab. This is episode 25. Big old nice round number. Who who knew we were going to make it 25 episodes? <laughs> well, we did. You we did and we're going to we've no plans on stopping. So today our topic will be intensity and uh in your workouts and so um before we get to that how are you doing today cody um you know i'm here I'm pretty good <laughs> it's uh not august i feel though that it's i feel like this month has just kind of become august you know kind of uh slightly better looking sister brother whatever uh but uh it's okay how about you? <laughs> it's all right. I had uh, a really fun night yes, or a really fun day yesterday, and then but like, have you ever had those days where you like did a lot of fun things, but then the next day you're just like exhausted because that's yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We were up, up and at them, the, like running around all day, and so this day today I'm just super low energy, but I got it all done. Got the gym done, got my cardio done, killing it, kind of. <laughs> nice. <laughs> well, I mean, that's good. You got that all done, and you had fun. So Heck you yeah. hear that, listeners? You <laughs> can do it all. <laughs> you can do it all. It just takes a really shitty cooler and a lot of planning. <laughs> <laughs> and was there, there any alcohol involved in this fun? No, I don't, I don't drink, so it's no alcohol. Oh, see, that's that's another thing. Fun without alcohol, fun and fitness. What? what fun is this? and fitness. And I was All hanging out at bars. Even I was at wow out and about not drinking. <laughs> that's impressive. Had, I had a went to a rugby game. They killed it, and then we went to a bar and um, for a birthday party, and then we went to another party and i played a drinking game without drinking so yeah that's how do you how do you do that like what kind of game was it <laughs> it was kings like have you ever played kings before no nah. uh, it's just like one of those like party games with cards and nah. i drank uh, my zevias um my well, root beer nice. that i like so <laughs> just probably like Got progressively more full bladder full of, instead of yeah. drunk. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But everybody else is drunk, so they don't really notice that you're not. So it works out. It That's works a good, good point. Yeah, because usually I used to drink because I was socially anxious. I mean, it's not like I... Let me rephrase. Let me clarify. I didn't drink all the time. <laughs> like, it's just if we went out an evening, which yeah. I don't do anymore but when we did i would drink because it helped me relax because i was very anxious uh but that is you know one thing that you don't really realize that even if you're the sober one and everyone else is drunk they are not paying attention to how sort of <laughs> awkward or whatever you are they're just you know in their own world having fun and uh so man this whole time i did not even have to drink <laughs> no no one notices i and i put a koozie on all of my drink like cans so, like, no one can ever even tell what I'm drinking. Just can, That's so. so smart. And that way people don't come up to you yeah. and be like, why aren't you drinking? And no, no one ever knows. Like, so. Well, and, like, sometimes I even, I'll get the non-alcoholic beer. Like, um, Heineken makes one that's, like, two, has, like, a carb or a half or something. And I'll have that. And uh, so even if you, like, pull it out, it just looks like a Heineken. So great that's kind of cool yeah just all the tricks today thanks Kel. <laughs> i i mean it was it was a very party field day apparently but uh it went it worked out well so it it sounds exhausting i'm tired I'm for so you i'm tired <laughs> <laughs> it's like that's the thing uh you know there even when you're you're having fun uh, if you are an introvert you know that there's a crash coming like the next day and, and you just you don't need to people for a, a good amount of time after that. So I do peopling like once a year. So 
I I uh, like ski plane like once a week, I would say, but like that was a long stretch of it. Um a long stretch of peopling, which got really tiring. <laughs> so today I had like a social hangover <laughs> where I yeah, just wanna lay on I my couch too. and binge TV. I bet. But I made it to well, the gym. Thanks for talking hit, to me. Hit arms <laughs> and it went great. Got a, a PR even. So, and I think that nice. segues us into our next topic. I think. Yeah. Which is intensity. I think. Yeah. Uh, so, do you want to define <laughs> intensity? Like, kind of uh, the parameters to what we're talking oh. about, maybe? Well, <laughs> <You're> like, no. <laughs> 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 it's like, I get, yeah, <laughs> I think so. Um, okay, so intensity. So there's just working out and kind of going through the motions and challenging yourself. Uh, and then there's not going through the motions and, and pushing yourself and making sure that your intensity, and by definition intensity, man, I don't fucking know, but it's just it's like, it's not like a CrossFit hit type of intensity. It's not you know, I'm going to be on the ground in a puddle of sweat, hardly able to breathe. It's more of just kind of almost bringing fear into the workout. You're, you're just, you're pushing so hard. You don't know if you can get another rep. You, you might push it to failure. Um, essentially you're being efficient with your workout and you're not shying uh, away from your potential. If that makes sense that I could have had a way better definition, but my brain was I, like, no, <laughs> um, I don't know. Like, so, cause I, like, I get, I think that's one of the like first questions any coach ever gets, right? Well, how, how do I know if I'm lifting heavy enough? And the way I always describe it, I'm like, you want to feel like the muscle is going to pop, like, um, almost is what it feels like. So I always use like a bicep curl, for example, like you want it to feel like it's going to pop almost like it, it should feel like tight. And like, there's a ton of blood in there because that's what we're we're doing, right? We're push, pushing all that blood into the muscle to rip apart those muscle fibers. So um, that's kind of what we're going for. So you want to like go at max, essentially, not yeah, not a one rep just, max, but like a no. max potential. Or close to yeah. I don't actually pop a muscle, but don't another pop thing. A muscle. To gauge intensity, I like to do or have people do is, you know, film yourself in the gym because you can take a look at your rep speed. And that is one way to kind of gauge how far you are away you are from failure. If you're doing a whole set and your reps do not slow down the whole set, you could have gone heavier. Yeah. If it slows down, but eh, it's still moving pretty quickly, still got to go, could have gone heavier. If it slows to the point where you are just creeping that last rep up, you're pretty much going to be on point there. So take a look at your rep speed. I think that's why filming yourself in the gym can be so important and such a good tool. Even if you don't have a coach, like just film yeah. yourself for yourself. So you yeah. could watch your form back, watch your, your rep speed, and uh, gauge where you're really at. Because sometimes something might feel hard, but then you, you look back at, at the video and your rep speed hasn't hardly changed or you don't look like you're struggling. If you don't have like a, a poop face uh, on, uh, going with your reps, <laughs> chances are you're not going hard enough. You should be wincing, making all sorts of weird faces. And uh, that's that a good sign that you're on the right track. <laughs> Serena Williams, that shit. Yeah, and the other one that I always use is like if you have three sets that you're supposed to be doing, you shouldn't be able to hit really the same number on all three sets like if your rep range is between 8 and 12 and you hit uh 10 10 10 that probably means that you should have been pushing it harder typically or you like have it depends on your rest period too like if you take a no, long enough true. rest period yeah you might be able to hit all those for uh the same amount of reps in a set but, uh, sorry, my microphone is jiggling and I don't know why. <laughs> uh, Please. But, uh, yeah, so if you find sometimes that you can't hit all the same reps the same way, you might not be taking a long enough rest period, which is kind of leads into 
Uh, one other thing with intensity that I wanted to talk about is like, so I give clients a recommended rest period, but I'm not super stickler on the actual time spent as long as you spend the actual time. Like you can go over that but not if you're just messing around on your phone and you just get lost and you're on Instagram before you know it, five minutes has passed. I'm not talking about like, yeah, it's fine. You can take as long as you want. It's just that, let's say I give someone 90 second rest period. I don't want you taking 30 seconds because that means you're not lifting heavy enough. And another way to gauge your intensity is if like, I give you 90 second rest period and after that set, you feel like you need a longer rest period than 90 seconds you're still kind of like breathing heavy your heart rate's still high it's another sign that your intensity is probably in the right place so you will want the rest period that i have assigned it doesn't mean that you have to like stay only 90 seconds you gotta jump into it you want to wait until like your heart rate starts to come back down so that you're cardiovascularly uh recovered so that you're not like out of breath when you're pushing the weight and that's also a reason how cardio can be helpful too because it helps you to like recover faster um but yeah, anyway, sorry. <laughs> you just, just want to lift weights faster. <laughs> yeah, fucking yeah. CrossFit, man. CrossFitters are notorious for doing that. Like if you, you go from CrossFit to more just, you know, regular strength training, bodybuilding style, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> they have the hardest time taking an actual rest break in between sets because they just want to do the, the CrossFit thing and it just keep going and going until it burns so bad and you're on the floor like in a puddle of sweat, not able to breathe. It's just like, that's a different type of workout. This workout over here, we're focused on strength, muscle building, that sort of thing. We're not just working out for the feeling of feeling tired. It's not efficient. No, no definitely not. And, and that's exactly, that's not going to do... Th- hit your goals it's not going to hit you get you where you want it to be you want to make sure that this intensity is at the correct spot otherwise you're not going to get any of the benefits that you're aiming for at least not quickly yes or yes as quickly as you could (laughs) and i think that you'll stall um you know, you'll stall eventually if you don't push yourself past a certain point. So at first, you know, your intensity could be lacking because you are still getting used to it. That's okay. I totally understand. It can be hard to know what weight to start with. You know, how heavy should you be lifting? It's kind of a trial and error period. But uh, eventually, you, you'll probably still make gains off of that. The newbie gains, right? Newbie you're you're gains doing more great. than you used to. Yeah, so you can pretty much get away with so much with the newbie gain period because you are making progress despite whatever the fuck else you're doing because you are giving your body a new stimulus. So you're going to make progress. But once you get to a certain point, uh, you have to really dial it in because you will plateau. You do have to check your intensity and, uh, of course, nutrition and all that other stuff. But intensity is very often overlooked just because you're getting to the gym and doing your workout doesn't mean you're going to get promised results from that you you have to push yourself (laughs) yep absolutely and like also it gets so boring if you're not pushing yourself and and like you don't like those the whole thing that we were talking about before with like falling back in love with the grind and that's when that comes in right so it's because the intensity like you you can just plateau on everything and if your intensity is not there you're not going to be able to PR, you're not going to be able to get that muscle mass that you're looking for or that fat loss that you're looking for or anything. So it's a bummer. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. It is a bummer. I think that's why, like, workouts have been slightly depressing for me lately because, like, with uh, knee and shoulder injuries, it's hard to get that intensity, you know, right. that you need for progress. And I'm just like, oh, I feel like I'm not making progress, but I also, like, you know, have limitations so don't injure yourself kids (laughs) stay in school and don't injure yourself (laughs) don't do drugs either (laughs) some are fun but that (laughs) (laughs) okay you can do drugs just be be careful be smart (laughs) Uh, we used to have man this is totally a, a tangent but i gotta go here for a second so you know back in our day it used to be like the war on drugs, like dare, you know, dare to keep kids off drugs and stuff like that. And uh, 
I used to think drugs were the devil, you know, like legit the devil. But now we're in this new phase where we're like, drugs can be helpful and they can treat depression and like all these things. And I have to tell you, it is quite a mindfuck, especially since I started my ketamine journey. And I feel like there's still this internal battle with like, oh no, like my dad was a police officer for, for 25 years. And I'm just like, oh God, you know, like the war on drugs was real in our house. So it's, uh, it's a mind fuck. <laughs> That's crazy. I can't imagine like telling your dad that you are like doing ketamine on, on, over the phone with someone. And it's just like crazy. Yeah. He'd be like, uh, we would arrest people for that. <laughs> oh, man. I'm outside your house now. <laughs> <laughs> but also... You have to think, too. So, Ronnie Coleman, right, he used to be a police officer. Mm -hmm. uh, and he did all the steroids. So, how, did, how does that work? <laughs> I mean, cops aren't always doing what they're supposed to. I mean, I think that's very Obviously. obvious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Oh, Sorry, goodness. that was a very wild tangent there. So Yeah, it took a left to... turn, but that's okay. Um... <laughs> So how do you, um, do you ever struggle with uh, gauging your own intensity uh, or have Me? you got it pretty much dialed in? Oh yeah, um, I definitely still struggle. I've done sets and then I'll have filmed it and I'll watch it back and either I'll be like, oh, I don't like my form there or yeah, that looked way easier than it felt. So obviously I could push more and I think... Uh, I th the majority of people fail mentally before they actually fail physically because your brain is going to tell you to stop because it's uncomfortable, right? So your brain kind of wants to protect you to be like, oh, danger, you know, this is hard. This is getting real hard. You should stop that now. Uh, so it's, it's the biggest battle, I think, is your mental state, your, your brain. And it can be even worse if you've been stressed or you, you're an anxious person it can be harder to even battle that in the gym and, you know, tell yourself you're fine. I think that's like the biggest thing is just being like, this isn't dangerous. I mean, unless you're bench pressing by yourself and you don't have a spotter, uh, then it might be a little dangerous. But uh, if you're just like pressing dumbbells uh, on, on the bench or doing bicep curls, uh, you just got to be like, yo, you're safe. This isn't dangerous. It sucks. It kind of hurts. But uh your arms are still moving. Physically, your arms can still move, so keep moving them. <laughs> yeah, I think the the biggest thing with me in intensity and, like, the times I struggle is, like, because I'm so scared of getting injured, sometimes I, I know I'm my own worst enemy with that because that's what they always tell you. Like, physical therapists tell you is, like, the more you're scared to get injured, the more likely you are to get injured. So, um, and which cannot sink into my head apparently because I still get so scared to like push it redline it a lot of times just because it's yeah. like if like something feels off that day like a lot of times my back will feel like oh like I slept funny because I'm old and like that's what hurts now <laughs> and yeah. so my back will feel like off not necessarily terrible but then I'll like notice in the gym I'm like taking it easy or and I have to be like, all right, bucker, buck up, let's go. And like have like a mental argument with myself to make sure I'm getting that intensity just because I'm, I'm scared and it's so yeah. stupid. But like, I, I think I'm just um, trying to remain healthy because I know how much injuries suck ass. So yeah, it's like not it's balancing they suck that, ass, dancing but... with that line. Yeah, it, apparently no one's going to help you if you get them. So uh, don't do that. <laughs> I feel like back, you can't do shit. So like, like yeah, you, that's true. Nothing you can do. Like you just have no. to like let it go. And yeah. But in the, like I am because that's really knock on wood. The only injury I've ever had is my back. And uh, like it made like you couldn't sit. You couldn't lay down. You couldn't stand. Like nothing was comfortable. And then, like I'm sure you have hurt your back before, or hurt something yeah. else. But it's just like I don't want that <laughs> again. It's the worst. It really is because you, 
it, it messes with every, every functional aspect of your body. It's your right. back. It's your foundation of everything. Uh, yep. So when you throw it out or whatever, I mean, like the good news is that I feel like when that does happen, I have the most confidence that it's going to go away on its own and that it has. And like, of course, you know, once you have a disc issue, you always kind of feel it. But uh, sometimes you just throw your back out like a normal old person. <laughs> yeah, and, like sneezing uh, <laughs> or something. <laughs> yes. And uh, it sucks because it, everything hurts. But luckily, it is like kind of a self-fixing issue. So that's helpful. Uh, but when you do like a shoulder or a knee, it's not a self-fixing issue and you need physical therapy or you need some doctor to fucking care. But uh, that's the hardest part, I think. <laughs> yes, but I think that's, that is, I think, my issue with intensity usually is the fear yeah. instead of like, I think that's I, I feel like I can gauge the red line pretty well. It's just like, am I willing to hit it? Yeah, that's another thing too. It's like, don't just go heavier to go heavier or to up the intensity. Like going heavier, heavier isn't the only way uh, to up the intensity. You could also, I mean, you have to make sure your form, you don't want to go up in weight if your form sucks. Like don't do it just to do it. But you could also slow down your repetitions because the slower you go, the harder it gets. Even light weights get hard when you slow down your your rep speed so uh you know make sure you're I using think... full range of motion proper form and slow it down if you're a little not unsure about going uh heavier at that moment <laughs> yeah and i I've, I've um i think i noticed a big difference in my leg uh my legs when i started slowing down um leg extensions i, I noticed a big di difference in my the detail in my quads um just because I think it, it the intensity instead of just moving weight quickly that was heavy that really just like dropping the weight and slowing it the fuck down helped so much more and um, the other thing I've recently started adding especially if I like I don't quite have enough to go up in weight is adding uh, holds and like um, pauses at like the really hard parts <laughs> um, so like i'll find that part that sucks the most in the reps which is almost always at the top right um or like right at the bottom where you're still holding it but not letting it go anyways um i'll hold it there for like uh, two three seconds or something like and it just fucking sucks <laughs> yeah those are that's another thing that reminds me so thanks for that reminder there's also more advanced uh, ways to up the intensity. So there's things called intensifiers. So that's things like rest pauses, drop sets, and holds, like like you mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, so those are some things that, as you get more advanced, you can incorporate in your training plan, especially in those moments where you're in between weights, or maybe you you don't feel safe, or maybe you do have an injury, so you can do uh, things like rest pauses. Essentially, let's say. Uh, you're supposed to do 12 reps of something. So you could do 12 reps and then rest for like five seconds or 10 seconds, whatever in between, and then bust out as many as you can to failure after that. Uh, that's one of my favorite types of intensifiers uh, just because it doesn't feel scary to me. Like it yeah. sucks because it burns, but it's not this like mental fuckery where you're just wondering if you're going to hurt yourself. Yeah. Uh, then holds and stuff, you know, you can do that even on the, the leg extension. You said how you slow it down. So if you, like, hold the weight up in, like, a static type of motion, then you're going to get a lot more out of that. Uh, drop sets, yeah, those are definitely a hellish type of uh, intensifier because basically you're just going and going. <laughs> um, yeah, so you start heavy and then you go down in weight, what, however many times it tells you. <laughs> yeah uh, do you um but i i don't i think it's really fun to kind of add those it's it's um mixes it up a little bit and again it doesn't feel scary um and i think it is sometimes not necessarily easier to gauge but like it's you have to be an idiot to not feel that intensity <laughs> yeah <laughs> like yeah. so um you can definitely feel it then you can feel how you're redlining it and you can 
feel the muscle like being torn. <laughs> or torn. <laughs> or, uh, don't metaphorically don't speaking. Your part. <laughs> metaphorically speaking. You could yeah. you could feel the micro damage that is occurring to micro. your muscle fibers. <laughs> um, yeah. So, do you do you generally have troubles with uh, intensity, and if so, like how do you gauge it? Like, do you have any uh, tips of how you kind of keep it in check? Um. So sometimes, like, uh, like so it might. I don't have the best routine right now, like as a day to day, just because um, I'm working the front desk at my gym and it, the shifts move a lot. So it depends on when I can work out. So right now I'm having not necessarily issues with intensity gauging, but like it, depending on how many meals I have, I feel different in the gym and it's just adding more variables than I'm used to, I guess, um, having going into a given workout. So like, Typically, well, before I quit my corporate job, I was doing, I would work out at the same exact time, almost like every day. And I had the same exact meals and I did the same exact thing every day. And it was like easy to tell, like, no, I should know what to expect. And um, now, while I should know what to expect, like any given day, depending on how many like meals, carb wise, especially uh, that I have in me, the workouts feel different, right? And so, like, some days it'll feel like I'm f fucking smashing it and, like, so strong. And uh, in those days, I um, I usually use the first set. So, like, I always know what numbers I – or weights I usually use. And then, like, the first set I'll go as far as I can into the rep range. Um, and if I can tell – usually I can tell, especially, like, if I'm up at 10, I can go for, like – and I know I can go for 15, then I'll just – drop it and use that as my last warm-up set up the weight and go for it um i don't know if that made sense but um <laughs> that's kind of how i gauge sure. it um if i need to go up in weight or not and if it feels heavy and like it's dragging um sometimes i'll add the pauses and stuff uh especially if like and I'm sure everybody's done this, but when they realize, like, after they started their working sets that they probably should have gone up in weight, and then that's when I'll especially mm -hmm. slow things down um, yeah. to make sure I keep the intensity right. Um, I don't know if that answers the question. But um, <laughs> that, that's kind of how I judge it. And then, like, I know pretty well off nowadays how much I should be able to lift on any given day and, like... Usually I'll either write notes in a notes app, like try to go up heavier next week on this workout or on this lift um, because I, I guess it was feeling good, feeling like I'm just about ready to go into that next, um, like get a PR or something. I can usually feel it uh, coming like the week ahead of time. I don't know. Nice. So yeah. that's, that's kind of how I do it because um, I really – I think I hold off. I think I'm way too cautious most of the time on risking it on PRs. Like, I don't know. Gotcha. Because I'm scary well, cat. I think. Uh, I don't I think normally have a spotter. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, for me, especially, right? I mean, any bench type of thing, I'm just, you know, nervous about. Cause that's where you know how my shoulders started hurting uh so yeah like i think it's it's okay to up your intensity slowly if you're feeling unsure about something uh you know start slowing down your reps just do everything you can with a weight that you are feeling safe with and then uh when you've exhausted everything move up because you're ready you you yeah, will be exactly right like you you have to move up <laughs> yeah well and that's kind of how i judge it like if like if the pauses are in the slow negatives and all that stuff is like starting to feel like cake i'm like okay i need to stop being a, a wimp and, and just fucking go for it like <laughs> and, and that's what i mean kind of by like i can feel it coming when it's like i'm it's time to move up and wait and that's when i write yeah. i'll write i have a notes app that just as like random things I think about in the lift and I'm like, all right, go up on this next one. 
next week, um, this one felt good at this weight. Form sucked on this one. Go back down. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, so, like, stuff like that. Just because um, if... Because the whole reason that I like that intensity can sometimes lead to injury is that because your form fails, right? It's not because the weight was too much. It was because you couldn't handle it with the proper technique. And um, yeah. so when I can tell I'm getting sloppy with something because I can't handle the weight, then I sometimes will rein it back in and make sure I can really handle those intensifiers, those pauses, those holds. And then I'll be like all right now it's time let's try it again and or maybe i'll get a spotter to see if it was a fluke workout and um that's what i did with like the 130 that i was talking about the other week um get a spotter for that one see if it was a fluke or because like once you have a spotter and you have someone watching you you feel like a superman and you can do you can just like crank them and it's like well okay so i was just being it was in my head okay <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I mean, it happens for sure because, yeah. yeah, doing uh, any sort of bench stuff with a barbell alone is always kind of freaky. So, can understand the caution there, <laughs> right? And like sometimes, especially if like you're working out at like six or so, five or six at at a, at a gym. Um, I know ours doesn't have like the biggest free weight section, so like when I bail on dumbbells like I'm really afraid of them like bouncing onto someone so like because our benches are so close so I always try to make sure like if uh, be aware of that too just because you don't want to hurt anybody like that especially with like looking bro kind of sometimes uh, I, I always <laughs> get concerned about that <laughs> <laughs> yeah and uh oh, there's something else I was gonna say regarding uh, oh yeah, and don't don't go up in weight if your form sucks. <laughs> no, <laughs> like focus on your form before you go uh, going up and be. Don't just chase a PR because honestly, it doesn't fucking count. If no. your form sucked, if you if you send me a video and you're like, I got a PR on this lift and, and your form is awful, you're not going down all the way, you're not hitting depth or you're not using full range of motion or whatever, I'm going to be like, cool, um, that doesn't count. <laughs> yeah. Well, and again, that's exactly how you're going to injure yourself is by doing stuff yeah. like when like curving your back, not going down to full rep. I mean, that's not going down to full depth is probably not going to injure you, but um also, don't be an ego lifter. Like, it's not cool. It's like yeah. everybody's it, – it, it it doesn't mean anything, right? It just means that you're letting your head, again, get in the way of your progress um, just in a different way. So instead yeah. of being like a cautious, a nervous Nelly like me, you're just going for it, and <laughs> it's not going to mean shit, and it's not going to help you move forward. <laughs> like, we're both going to be stuck in the same yeah. place. <laughs> so – yeah. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, like you said, just check the ego at the door. Um, check it at the the Instagram uh, login. You know, like, don't post shit. If, don't be like, I hit a PR if your form sucks. It's just, like, it's actually more impressive to me if someone uses proper form. I don't care what weight it is. If you're doing it properly, I'm like, fuck yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, exactly, and, it, and it's... Like and I've had these questions before where they're like, Oh, I saw like pros or like I saw people who look like they're really fit go in like with this especially it's always the lat pull down. And uh I go and ham on the lat pull down and they just <laughs> it didn't look like the way you told me and I'm like, Stop looking at them. They don't <laughs> like they're posting that video or nah. something. Like I don't like d don't look at them. Like stay in your lane. Do what I'm telling you yeah. to. Like you're gonna progress this way. I, yeah, they might look like they know what they're doing, but that doesn't mean you know what's going on. So. Yeah, yeah, and you know, there's definitely some pros that can get away with some questionable form, but uh, how many injuries has that that pro or whatever bodybuilder had? And like, it's okay, great, they are making progress despite their shitty form. But you know, you, you just if you can check off all of the boxes to make sure you are on the right path, head in the right direction, you might as well. Don't yeah. just be like, well, this person did it that way. But like, that's not you. And this yeah. person is either really lucky or they have really great genetics. Uh, 
it, it, it's just it's not you so do it the right way form the habits at the beginning <laughs> yeah. yeah it's it's way easier to form the proper habit the first time than try to unteach something uh, once your body gets used to it um because it's not gonna it's gonna feel like a mind fuck and it's not gonna feel natural which is gonna make it even harder to learn so um just stay the path <laughs> yes exactly stay the path oh. Yes, and uh, if you have a coach, listen to your coach. <laughs> yes, um, absolutely. You're paying them. Might as well do what they're saying. Yeah. Any other tips, tricks, or info about intensity that you can think of? I think that's all of my intensity stuff. Um, yeah, and yeah, I think you can also use the pump to kind of gauge sometimes, gauge intensity. So true. Um, true. But that's yeah. kind of you're not getting the a pump. Yeah, it's like you're either very dehydrated or you're not eating carbs or you're not pushing yourself. <laughs> yeah. Man, they're, they're, it's a delayed kind of way to tell intensity, but it's there. Should get a pump. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, yeah. I, Do you have anything else on that one? Keep this one. Yeah, we'll nah, keep it short. I, I like try to th- keep it a little short and sweet this week. And, short and uh, sweet, little note, love yeah. note on intensity. <laughs> yes, yes. Push yourself, folks. You got to get uncomfortable. Uh, should we move to the power talk? Let's do it. Okay. Let me find it. Okay. i was just like i don't remember what i chose okay um so here is the quote of the week there's no way to know what will happen if you keep trying but you know exactly what will happen if you quit so that's just you know i like that because i feel i mean honestly i feel like every other day i'm like i want to quit because i'm just you know everything hurts but um yeah, you know, there's there might be uncertainty if you keep moving forward and you don't ever really know what's going to happen or how long something's going to take. Uh, the only really way to be certain is to, to quit, and you'll know what will happen if you quit. But uh, if that's not the outcome you desire, then it's probably best that you don't <laughs> keep <laughs> moving forward uh, despite the obstacles, the hurdles, or uh, the desire to quit. Um you also have to ask yourself, you're just like, if you want to quit, is it coming from like a situational kind of acute response to something, or is this something that's like wrong? Is, is there? Do you really, really, actually want logically? Do you want to quit? Does is that your best interest? You know, you always have to keep your best interest in mind. Uh, so think about think about that. Is it emotional or is it logical? Um, yeah, that's all I got. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Short and sweet, and uh, I, I really like that quote. Hell yeah. Don't quit. Don't quit. <laughs> As all we right. just sign off. We're <laughs> Don't <today>. quit. <laughs> Goodbye. All right. <laughs> um, <laughs> so that was Lab Episode 25. Uh, please rate and review if you're into it. Um, if you have topic ideas, shoot them our way, and we'll talk to you guys next time. Bye. Bye.